650, whoever he is, and then this linebacker, and they're building the triangle over those guys, however you decide to play that. Backside, you're playing cloud or you're playing some other two-over-one concept, and this linebacker dude, uh, whoever he is, is you know involved in the coverage, right? He's a hook player, he's a match player, whatever it is, right? He's working weak. Or you could play your you know solo type of stuff where you're working him strong, or you could play your three-spin strong, right? Anything that brings the coverage this way to get the extra player by the byproduct of him going. Once he goes, now you've got more man-match principle stuff going on on this side because you're two for two, right, back and receiver. So when they run this route or some variation of this route, right, we're calling that a speed dig, right? He's going to hard break inside. He's going to stem it hard and then go, and you're swinging and flaring the back, something like that, okay? The quarterback can now read this dude, and he can say, okay, if you're working strong, I'm going to throw weak. And I'm either going to go one to two and say, okay, linebacker there, I'm out leveraging you. I know you don't have a cloud corner because your safety just went to the middle of the field, okay? If you run him out and open this up, we're going to beat with all that space. Our inside stem and speed cut is going to make that corner's life hard. So you're playing solo, something like that. We're going to make his life difficult, okay? And the three vertical either holds the front side safety or brings the back side safety, right? And now we're going to have a chance to throw good old-fashioned slide curl, right? The Hank concept that's worked forever, against a high-load player who's in the flat, right? So if the safety's weak, we're going to throw there, right? So if he's working backside, I'm now looking strong side, and I'm reading the flat defender one to two, right? Okay? And so now, it's a binary read for the quarterback, A or B, right? What did that guy do, okay? Now let's take that read into account if this guy is not there. If he's walked out, what did that guy do, okay? Now let's take that read into account if this guy is not there. If he's walked out, he's in the overhang or he's up on the ball but can drop because he's a skilled player. Now all of a sudden, i got to be thinking, he might drop, and even if this guy rotates away, they can still build three over two because it could be an eight-man drop, three guys. They could also be rushing this guy and it still be two over two, but my read key said safety works strong, I should work weak. I worked weak, but you know now we've got bad matchups, right? This guy's taking a guy, we could have all kinds of problems because we don't know where people are going. This guy could be dropping down inside, and we've got this. Well, he's working that way, what do I do now? These types of things. So we created, instead of A, B, now we've got a whole bunch of other choices for that quarterback. His read key is not nearly as easy. And so now when you're talking about adjusting to trips, we always want to build structural stuff that creates a situation where you can't just look at us and say, okay, the answer here is read the boundary safety and see what he does, right? We want them to think, okay, who's capping what, who's where. Um, I've been reading, uh, reading the R4 stuff from, from Dub Maddox lately, the what is open. And uh, you know, just thinking, trying to put that in perspective of what we do. And there's a lot of what we learned without somebody explaining it to me uh, from an offensive perspective that we just learned from film study, right? This is harder on that quarterback to have the potential that lots of things could happen than an A-B choice. Make sense? So we want to build that for the offense. We want to create that scenario and that problem. 